In this new video, I'll talk about a PC bill that's around $1,000. It's actually a little bit more expensive and it's going to be excellent for 1080p gaming. Now, at the end of this video, I will explain on how to make this PC cheaper without losing any performance. I know that I've made a recent video that's actually really similar to this one, but right now prices keep going down and the graphics card and CPU for this PC are going to be much better than the other video and the price is going to be really similar. And if you're looking for a pro build PC or you want a PC build that's more expensive, you will either have more links down below in the description, but you will also have a bunch of videos in my channel that I recommend you watching. I mean, this is what my channel is about, so you can go ahead and watch those videos. With that being said, let's start with this one. With the CPU, I went with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600, which is basically the same as the Ryzen 5 5600 X, and it's cheaper, so there is literally going to be no difference, and the price is going to be lower. If we compare it with Intel, it's similar to the i5 12400, and it's going to deliver excellent performance at 1080p for both streaming and gaming, but also video editing, and I think that this CPU is actually one of the best ones in terms of price to performance. Then for the CPU cooler I picked the ID Cooling SE 224XT, this one is 30 bucks, but to be honest with you, you can get away with this stock cooler from AMD, but if we want better temps, I would actually go with this one and I wouldn't spend much more on a CPU cooler, since CPU temps with this cooler are going to be perfectly fine. With the motherboard I went with the MSI B550M Pro, this one has Wi-Fi included, it's around $120 and it's a micro ATX motherboard, this whole build it's a micro ATX build. And this means that it's going to be compact and smaller than ATX Factor, which I think it's a positive thing, especially if you're looking for minimalistic aesthetics and the motherboard itself is going to work great. Then for the memory kit, I went with the silicon power 16 gigs of RAM 2x8 of the DR4 CX16 memory at 3200 MHz. This is literally all that we're going to need at 1080p. You don't need more than this, especially for gaming. Now, if you want to do some heavy multitasking as well, then you may want to go with 32 gigs of RAM. But if just for gaming 16 gigs is going to be the sweet spot then for the storage i picked the western digital blue one terabyte of m.2 ssd if you're going to download some big files or some big games you will need at least one terabyte you can get away with 500 gigs of ssd if you're going to play games like csgo valorant and fortnite but if you want to download some heavier games like fly simulator red dead redemption forza horizon then i think that one terabyte is going to make much more sense then for the graphics card and the most important component for gaming, I went with the MSI Radeon RX 6600 XT. I think that you don't need more than this for 1080p. And on the other side, from Nvidia, you can get the RTX 3060 or 3060 Ti. This one is actually slightly faster than the 3060, but also worse than the 3060 Ti. But we all know that the 3060 Ti, it's around $150 more expensive, and that's why I didn't put it here. I wanted to make this build as cheap as possible with excellent performance. For, months. for the case, I went with a deep cool Matrix 40 Micro ATX Mid Tower case. Remember that we are working with a Micro ATX build, and this one is going to make sense. The airflow overall is actually going to be great, and since we are not having the highest end components, we don't need much more than this. If you want to make the airflow better, stay until the end of this video because I will explain on how to make this PC better and more expensive, but also on how to make it cheaper without losing performance. And then for the power supply, I went with the Every Supernova 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply at 80 bucks. Power supplies right now are actually overpriced. The market for this component it's actually very expensive right now. You can wait a couple of weeks to see if you can get a power supply that's actually better than this one at a similar price. I think that 650 watts is going to be totally fine with this build. But of course, if you want future upgradeability, you want to put like a 3090 Ti in the future, and you also want to upgrade the CPU to a super high end CPU, then you want to go with at least 850 watts. So that is the whole build that I recommend you buying for around a thousand dollars. It's actually a thousand and thirty bucks. I know it's a little bit over budget, but believe me that for 1080p gaming, this is going to be more than enough. You will be able to run every single game right now, even the new modern games. Then for competitive games, if you lower the graphics, you will be able to get at least 240 FPS on average. So you can buy a high refresh rate monitor if you wanted to. And then for high demanding video games, it's definitely going to be great even on the highest settings at 
60 fps on average so i think that this build is the best one for around a thousand bucks now i wouldn't spend more than 1200 dollars on a gaming pc at 1080p gaming if you want to go for a 1440p monitor then yes you can get higher end systems but if you have a 1080p monitor and you're not looking to upgrade it over time then i think that it's a waste of money to spend more than a thousand and two hundred dollars now is the time to make this pc a little bit cheaper without losing performance in order to do this you want to avoid the cpu cooler as i've said before you can get away with the amd stock cpu cooler for this particular cpu it's not going to get really hot so don't worry cpu temps are still going to be fine and then i downgraded this storage for a 500 gig m.2 ssd stick now this might be enough for you and this might be not so be careful with this downgrade depending on how many big files you want to download down the line the total price for this pc with these two downgrades is going to be 950 dollars so you end up saving around 70 bucks and you are getting literally the same performance just less storage and some higher end temps but it's not going to be noticeable on the other side if you want to make this pc more expensive and also get some upgrades i went ahead picked a better cooler the cooler master hyper 212 rgb black edition you're going to get more rgb on this build not only because you get the cpu cooler but also because i added four cooler master fans for this pc you want to replace the back fan and then you're going to have those three rgb fans on the front so overall you're going to get better airflow and also better temps and of course more rgb another thing i did that i don't consider really necessary is that i added 16 gigs of ram so 32 gigs in total remember what i've said before if you're going to do a lot of multitasking and let's say streaming as well i think 32 gigs is going to make sense and that's why i added this to this build the total price with these upgrades are going to be around 1200 dollars maybe a little bit less if you want to improve the fps and your gaming performance overall you will need to upgrade the cpu or the gpu but those are more expensive upgrades and that's why i decided not to make them on this video if you found it helpful please leave a like and subscribe but most importantly hit that bell button so you get notified when i upload this type of content which i do from three to five times a week thank you guys for watching thank you for your support and i will see you on the next one